this is Duke University. Oftentimes when we consider things like racial slurs, we consider those to be things of the past. Our research reports that actually they're far more prevalent than the average person may think. The four social groups that we studied within this, um, within this research were white men, white women, black men, and black women. The first study was a survey, the second study was an archival data study, and then the third study was a behavioral experiment. And what we found in this research was this reinforcing pattern, if you will. We found that in study one, that socially dominant groups were more likely to use racial slurs than were socially subordinate groups. Study two, we found that socially dominant groups were more likely to observe racial slurs than socially subordinate groups. And in study three, we found that socially dominant groups were the least likely to speak up against racial slurs. So when we look at these three studies in total, we're actually studying this reinforcing pattern that sheds light on how racial slurs are allowed to perpetuate within an organizational setting. So if the dominant group uh, uses slurs, they observe slurs, but they're the least likely to speak out against slurs, it shows how this can go on and on and perpetuate continually within an organizational setting. We found that social dominance orientation um, influenced the extent to which people remain silent. So people who had a high social dominance orientation, which is a high preference for inequality, or they value inequality, then those people were more likely to remain silent. And we found that white men had the highest preference for uh, social inequality. There's been this underlying presumption that uh, for the most part, not always, but for the most part, people don't speak out against wrongdoing because of what they stand to lose. So they may not speak out because they may stand to lose friendships or they may stand to lose career opportunities. What our research adds is that it may not necessarily be what uh, that people aren't necessarily focusing on what they stand to lose, but people actually may not speak out because of what they stand to gain. So specifically, socially dominant groups may not speak out because it is to their benefit to maintain the social inequality that racial slurs actually incite. What we're hoping that managers will do is they will try to understand the social context in which racial slurs are allowed to flourish uh, so that they can minimize environments of intolerance and promote environments of inclusion.